For more videos on people's struggles, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Over the past fortnight, Italy has seen a number of protests by student and youth organizations. These followed the death of a student, 18-year-old Lorenzo Perelli, in a workplace accident. Lorenzo was killed while completing his mandatory internship at a private company. For many Italian youth, this tragic death was not a one-off incident, but symptomatic of a larger malaise in the education and employment sectors in the country. Decades of neoliberal policies have drastically reduced the opportunities available to Italian students. The latest round of protests has reflected the frustration and anger stemming from these realities. Origio Coppola of Poteri al Popolo talks about the recent protests and the nature of the Italian education system. Friday, 21 January, uh, like the Lorenzo Parelli, the young student working in an internship, died uh, during uh, the working, and it was a working accident. And even in the night of the 21st of January, students in Rome took to the streets to protest against this situation. Because, of course, it's not like, uh, it's not a case, it's not like an event uh, once... Uh, uh, that happened. It's something that it's regularly, like working accidents in Italy are very, very frequently. You have in the normal labor market five, four to five people dying every day. Uh, so it's like a record on the on the European level. But it's uh, it was like a protest also against the general situation of students because in the last two years, students were really the forgotten subjects of uh, of the of poli of the politics in in Italy. Uh, you had like uh, all the question of uh, distant learning, of uh, of the uh, closing schools during the pandemic. They really were uh, totally marginalized in their needs. They were totally marginalized in listening what the students are saying. And even if at the beginning students said, OK, it's OK that we are not going to school because we do not want to be uh, infected with the virus. Uh, after a couple of months, the uh, politicians, the governments didn't give any other response to school situation. So the classes, they still were overcrowded. Uh, all the infrastructural system uh, was not uh, improved so that people could, uh, the students could return to school. And this is one of the most important reasons why uh, uh, what, what happened Friday with Lorenzo, then the students said, no, it's, it's enough, enough, it's enough. We cannot deal it anymore. We cannot manage it anymore to, to be like such victims, such under pressure um, of, of, the, of the system. And of course, all these school problematics are not just linked to the pandemic. It's a huge, a bigger transformation of the school system. Italy is living since more or less 15, 20 years. It's like more and more away from a school that gives you the uh, cultural and the social instruments to understand the world, to be a, a, a person into this world, and much more like uh, a, a place where you in, um, increase your employability, where you are just formed as a labor market subject. And this is something that the students really do not uh, want anymore, above all, because the labor market is not offering them anything positive. You have still uh, like a youth unemployment that is that it is huge. You have still uh, precarity that um, hurts every uh, one out of two people under thirty five. So this was one of these were the main reasons why uh, last weekend when uh, Lorenzo Parelli died in a working accident, the youth took to the streets uh, three days uh, in a row. So the the main educational system is still public. But there are um, uh, reforms that were in, introduced, like above all, starting from 2013, 14, and then 15, uh, reforms uh, which uh, introduced like an internship, a working internship, a mandatory internship for uh, students. So every, every single student has to dedicate 200 to 400 hours every year in a private company to work there. And the explanation is, with this um, experience, you can increase your possibility to find a job 
in uh, when you leave school uh, with this we are adapting our school and the educational system to the european average because you have in other countries like in germany like in switzerland like in france you have this like uh, this uh, educational system that um, uh, you, you are at school, but you're also in, in a workplace, in a company making concrete experiences. What we are saying, like uh, sowing uh, five, six, seven years after the introduction of this, um, of this mandatory internship is the fact that for a lot of younger people, uh, this situation in a workplace means exploitation and means unpaid work. Because first of all, these uh, mandatory internships are not paid. So the people, the young people are going to the school, uh, uh, to, this, uh, to the companies working there for free. And secondly, uh, we have a lot of uh, people explaining us that they are making very repetitive work. They are making very also dangerous work. Uh, and uh, and so it's not something that you are like introduced in the in the, in the labor market to understand how the labor market is functioning to 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 understand what you want to do uh, with your future. But it's above all the labor market needs uh, more uh, people to be exploited. So we put there also the students. This is what uh, what the students are saying, and uh, and this is the big uh, the big issue because. They are not saying that uh, the mandatory internship is a problem per se, but it's a problem in the way the state is organizing it. So the state is pushing uh, unpaid workers uh, into the labor market to be exploited. And the, the, the case of Lorenzo, uh, who died uh, on Friday, January 21, uh, was the really the, 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 the how to say, the, the, the most impressive uh, um, example how this exploitation works. That means that even you can die in a working accident during this internship. The protests peaked on January 28th when mobilizations took place across the country. Many of these mobilizations were met with heavy repression. What were the key demands of the students and youth on the streets? How do the issues faced by students also relate to the larger economic and social crisis in Italy? So the demands are really, uh, really general in the sense they demand of uh, first of all that it's not possible that the 18 year young uh, student dies during uh, a working accident in an internship. This is something that they cannot accept. It's something like really attacking the dignity and also like the yeah the solidarity between between the students. So this is one of the first demands. Of course, they are also demanding like a reform of the school uh, system because they do not want just to be unpaid and exploited workers uh, for private companies. But it's a, a demand, as I said, also for a better future. They say the future, it's not, it's unwritten. It's not like that we are condemned to be what we, we are today. We want to change the situation. And that's the reason why we took to the streets. And I think that um, so the state in the last weeks, they answered with a lot of uh, repression, with a lot of violence in every single city where the students took to the streets, the police blocked the demonstrations, the police attacked the demonstrators violently. And uh, this is something that is really not acceptable. And uh, for making a, a concrete example, how the state and how the ruling class and the political class is dealing with the situation was last weekend when during the demonstrations of Friday uh, afternoon all over Italy. Uh, Friday uh, was uh, mobilization day all over Italy from called from students organizations. In the same time in the Italian parliament uh, we had the election of the new uh, president of the Italian Republic and uh, Sergio Mattarella was re-elected uh, with a large majority in the eighth round, uh, round of the elections and it was like he's a very old guy he represents the old, he represents the, uh, un, un, the incapability of the ruling class to renew uh, the political institutions. And so while the parliamentarians were electing an old guy that is just, uh, yeah, I mean, it was changing nothing to get the situation worse in, in Italy. Um, the, the students took to the streets and they were beaten by the police. And this is really uh, an image that represents the Italian situation today.
Yes, of course. I mean, the the last 30 years, Italy uh, was the only country where salaries didn't increase in the last 30 years, but they even decreased uh, uh, by uh, 6%. And this is something that uh, working class people and working class families are really feeling directly. This is something that uh, the, the Italian economy uh, could grow only thanks to more the more exploitation of the working class uh, to uh, 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 inflation that uh, blocked the increase of salaries and so on and this is the reason uh, why 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 this um, the, the, the students protests are very important today they are touching exactly this kind of problematics that uh, the student situation in the labor market it's like the the most precarious compared to the to the larger working class and they are making the link between the the transition between student between the educational system to the labor market and this is also the reason why they called to uh, uh, to unions to to showing themselves uh, uh, showing themselves uh, solidarity with the students what didn't happen and i think this is the biggest um uh, the, the biggest problem we, we are living today, that the student movement is able to take to the streets, is able to uh, condemn us also general uh, economic uh, uh, developments in, in, in Italy, but the unions do not recognize that there is a huge potential to be uh, with with the uh, with the students and to connect the workers uh, struggles uh, going on in Italy with the student struggles because we saw that since uh, June 2021 a lot of uh, companies private companies are uh, firing uh, the workforce are closing the productive uh, uh, fabrics are uh, uh, producing in the eastern europe so there is a huge precarization of the labor market and this could be like a, a moment of unity of convergence of the struggles between students and and workers but it's uh, all about the unions if they do not decide to sustain to support this kind of uh, uh, student struggles it's very important uh, very difficult also to win their struggles their working struggles